Welcome back to the news today. This is One on One. Kosovo is one of the world's youngest countries, having declared independence in 2008. But before that, tensions between the country's Albanian and Serb population saw the country split along ethnic lines. The most severe case of those, perhaps, was the Kosovo War of 1998-99, to which ended with NATO military intervention and the withdrawal of Yugoslav troops. Our guest tonight is Dr. Anver Hojai, Kosovo's former foreign minister and education minister and the current head of the country's Foreign Relations Commission. Dr. Hojai, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. So since you're here on a visit in Israel, I want to start there. Kosovo has been recognized by some 100 countries. Israel is not one of them. Is that part of this visit? Is that something that Kosovo still aims for? Of course, uh, for us, it is very important to get uh, the support of Israeli, Israeli government and of your people in terms of recognizing Kosovo as an independent and a sovereign state. And my job is to see the possibility of opening a new chapter of the relations between the two countries. Uh, in our view, we have a similar history. Uh, Kosovo people were suffering uh, very long uh, on their struggle, struggle to be an independent, independent state. And uh, we were having a, a long path uh, to uh, have normal dignity as other nations um, in the world. And in that sense, uh, uh, getting a positive decision by your government to recognize Kosovo would be very important. But we are also very much interested to go beyond that, to have cooperation in different areas. In terms of uh, an economy, see, in terms of seeing uh, investors from uh, Israel coming to Kosovo and investing in some key sectors like energy, mining, telecom, uh, but also having exchange in uh, education, in culture, in many areas which are important for the for for both nations. One of the sort of assumed reasons for the Israeli government for not having recognized Kosovo is some sort of fear of setting a precedent for Palestinians, for establishing, for unilateral sort of establishing a state. Is that founded, do you think? Is that, is that really what's behind it? Actually not. Uh, I mean, if I would compare Kosovo with Israel, I think we declare uh, our independence in the same way as your um, representatives and your people did in 1948. That's mean uh, there is never a reason for any, any precedent. At the same time, uh, Kosovo uh, was the last unit to declare independence after a long, um, around 20 years process of the dissolution of former Yugoslavia. Uh, in former Yugoslavia, we were an entity like Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Macedonia, who are today independent states. We have been largely recognized by the majority of the um, uh, democratic part of the world. There are 108 countries who have recognized Kosovo. We got also membership in 50 uh, international organizations. That's mean Kosovo is a geopolitical fact. Uh, we are an independent state. We will be forever an independent state. But um, uh, we are in the process of building new partnerships. We are in the process of building new alliances. And Israel matters a lot to the people of Kosovo because people of Kosovo think that they have similar history like your people. And on a personal basis, I was a huge admirer of Jewish people for the last 20 years. And in, in, in what, in terms of a similar history, it's hard to not think about, uh, if we're talking about the sort of darker parts of history, is that what you're referring to? Yeah, uh, I mean, we have been persecuted uh, the verb uh, in the last, uh, I mean, in a timetable from 1913 to 1999, uh, different regimes from Serbia were um, uh, violating human rights. Uh, it was a policy of ethnic cleansing against the Kosovo uh, people, and it was also a policy of genocide, which was uh, finally prevented because NATO, as you were mentioning some minutes ago, and international community intervened to, to, to stop that. I want to take you for a minute then. You mentioned, obviously, independence. You were a big part of actually reaching and declaring independence uh, just a few short years ago, relatively. This sort of process of unilateral action, it's something that here in the Middle East, and certainly between the Israelis and Palestinians, is discussed. Is it good? Is it bad? How do you see a state taking unilateral action sort of now in retrospect some seven years later? Uh, you should understand the Kosovo case of in, um, uh, in terms of its geography, in terms of its uh, history, and in terms of its uh, uh, legal position which we had in former Yugoslavia. Uh, 
Uh, Kosovo declared independence in 2008. In 2006, Montenegro declared independence because that country, which was a multi-ethnic, um, uh, multinational uh, state composed by different entities, as it was Yugoslavia, didn't exist. Yugoslavia ceased to exist in 1990s, and it was a, a violent breakup of a multi-ethnic uh, state. In, in that sense, I, I don't think that we can compare uh, the case of Kosovo with other cases in, in the world. And uh, as you are mentioning the term uh, unilateral declaration of independence, we did uh, declare the independence in the same way as you did uh, as a country in 1948. And I think uh, neither, uh, nobody would have any kind of argument really to be against, against Kosovo's independence. So going now a little bit uh, to present time, Kosovo is the youngest country uh, in, in uh, Europe and one of the youngest countries in the world. Also, a fair share of economic problems of young people leaving to sort of see greater opportunity, a lot leaving for Germany. And of course, it's not something unusual in Europe right now, a whole lot of problems between uh, Spain, Greece, and so on. Where do you sort of see Kosovo in terms of sort of getting on its feet like the rest of Europe? Where, where is it headed? Uh, we celebrated uh, some uh, days ago uh, our seventh birthday of uh, independence. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, that's me and we are in a, in a process of, uh, of, a, of a state building. And state building in the um, case of Kosovo means building uh, political institutions from scratch, as your people did five decades ago, uh, creating a basis for market economy, uh, building an education system, building a health um, uh, care system. Uh, but we are very proud that in the last seven years, we were able really to uh, create um, uh, stability within Kosovo, and we were able also to have uh, economic growth. Before declaration of independence, our GDP growth was, was actually 1%. In the last seven years of our independence, uh, the GDP growth was 4 to 5%. That's mean uh, political independence of Kosovo improved even the life of the people in economic, economic uh, terms. Uh, beyond that, as a young country, we are not able in seven years to it's address... It's not a long time to build yeah, a country. Exactly. We are not able in seven years to address all problems which we couldn't uh, address in the last 100, uh, 100 years as a, as a country which was under... So uh, taking you back into history for a moment, last year you became the first Kosovan minister to visit Belgrade since, uh, since independence. How would you characterize that relationship now between the uh, Since 2011, we are in a dialogue for normalizing the relations between the two uh, independent states. That uh, dialogue, it is uh, facilitated and led by the European Union. We were able to reach around 30 agreements, uh, which improve the life of the people living in Kosovo and the life of the people living in uh, Serbia. If I would interpret in a very simple way what has happened in the last three years is that Serbia has accepted the political existence of Kosovo as an independent uh, state. They accepted the reality of an uh, independent uh, Kosovo. And this dialogue is not about status, it's not about independence, but it's about uh, uh, solving some uh, outstanding issues between the two countries. Uh, both countries are aiming to get uh, membership into the European Union. And European Union was pretty clear to Serbia. They uh, told uh, them that they cannot um, get membership until they are not reaching a legal binding agreement with Kosovo. And when I was uh, talking with different European governments, what's mean to reach a legal binding agreement, they told me that uh, they have to establish diplomatic you relations see, with of, you. When, when you're witnessing the very little time we have left, <clears throat> when you're witnessing sort of what's happening in Eastern Ukraine, between Eastern Ukraine and Russia, do you? How, how do you see this in Kosovo? Because there are little similarities that can pop up there. Uh, not at all. I mean, I, when I was Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, I was among the first uh, uh, ministers of foreign affairs to support uh, territorial, territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine. I think what was happening in case of Crimea and what is happening for the time being uh, in Ukraine is a, a violation of the international law. Uh, I think um, uh, this is, in my view, one of the most um, and dangerous uh, crises after, after, after the Yugoslavia. On Yugoslav the words dangerous crises, I have to end. That's it for us for tonight. Dr. Enver Hojai, thanks very much for being with us.